All right, thanks for coming. I'm Sherry Keller. Rochelle Winan. <laughs> Melissa Kleschel. And uh, we all work in the North Branch Area Public School District. And uh, one thing we wanted to really emphasize is just the importance of accessibility and just having accessible tools for our students. Um, and I just was able to take part in a Google um, webinar about this, and I thought it was great tools for all of us, even if we've seen some of these tools before, a great reminder for us. So just starting out, we wanted to ground ourselves with um, a quote that actually came from the webinar that I went to, which is, designing for inclusion begins with recognizing exclusion and um, just grounding ourselves in, in recognizing that all of our students are at different places and even we are at different places for learning and how important that is to think about as we design lessons and try to help them find tools that help them be successful in the classroom later. So if you ever wanna take some time and just experience a little bit what it might be like um, to have some of the disabilities that maybe some of our students are facing, you can click on the web disability simulator. It's actually a Chrome extension. And once you download it, it comes up here in your Chrome browser. And you can kind of choose different things to experiment with to see just some of the difficulties some of our students might have. So on our site, they have things like color blindness, what that might look like. And as you select those things, your screen will um, take on what that might look like. So if you can see my screen, kind of gives you an idea of what it would be like to um, have different sorts of color blindness. I, I just, I really like this because as we plan lessons, it's just really important for us to think about where our students are coming from and um, the different needs our students have. And so with that being said, uh, we really encourage just as you plan things, thinking about different things that students might have, needs they might have. In this case, we have, um, I found some posters online. I actually linked those into the presentation. Jeremy will share out the presentation, I think he just said. Yeah. And um, these are just helpful reminders of things to think about as you're planning lessons to help students with different needs. Our, uh, our students who have uh, visual impairment, uh, do's and don'ts for low vision and dyslexia. And if you get time to take a look at some of those posters, just to help as you're designing your own lessons, I think they're a great um, resource just to help as you plan. So uh, most many of our schools are now one-to-one -on, -one on Chromebooks. And Chrome has done a really nice job adding a lot of accessibility tools right there for our students. So they don't even have to download uh, extensions anymore. We're gonna start with uh, Chrome book tools that are available. And then we're going to move on to actual um, tools that are within our Google suite. And then we'll finish off with extensions that can be downloaded to help with accessibility. Um, for our students and staff. So uh, one cool thing we also put in this presentation um, that we found was this Chromebook simulator. So if you don't have a Chromebook to work off of, but you have questions about different things on Chromebooks, you can go to the Chromebook simulator. It answers a lot of questions about different things on Chromebooks. So I know a lot of us, at least in North Branch, we have a different device than our students have. Our students have a Chromebook and we have um, desktops, I mean, sorry, laptops, <laughs> desktops. Does anybody even have a desktop anymore? <laughs> I don't even know. And um, so, but this is a great tool to use to explore different parts of the Chromebook. And uh, we linked that into our presentation as well. Um, but on a Chromebook, I am on a Chromebook right now. We're actually presenting from a Chromebook. I'm gonna escape here. On students Chromebooks down here, they have these, uh, this window or this little uh, menu bar at the bottom. When they click on that, this is where they're going to find accessibility tools. Accessibility tools can be found uh, on the settings. Here's the accessibility guy right here. And I actually wanna show accessibility options in the quick menu. If I show that, it makes it a lot easier for me to find. Now their accessibility tools are just right here. 
And so if, if your students don't have accessibility tools in the menu, that's where you find them in settings and you can click and turn that on. What I like about that is you can access a bunch of accessibility right there. And if you click and turn it on, it will put it right in the menu on the bottom for them. So if I dictate and put my microphone dictation down here, if I put, click learn version, it's gonna actually do it, but I'm sorry. Uh, if I click select to speak, it's gonna put it in my dock down on the bottom. And if I select on screen keyboard, again, that goes on my dock on the bottom. With those tools selected for students, they can easily accept, access those. Yeah, it is hard to say, Jeremy. They can easily access them um, right from their Chromebook anytime. And so what that looks like is even in Google, if they want to type and look something up, they can do a select to speech. They can hit the dictation and it will start listening to them dictate. You can see it has the it's going to awkwardly listen to anything that I say now. And that will be in the recording. So students have that option right there from their Chromebook. They all have um, the option is to bring an on-screen keyboard up. So we have some students that have um, sensory or touch that it's hard, uh, keyboard is hard, or maybe they, they don't have full keyboard capabilities. They could do either touch keyboard on the screen or they could do with a click just one button at a time. So that's available to them. And then this is really nice as well. This is uh, text, it will speak to you. All a student has to do is click on that and drag around what they want to be spoken. And I'm gonna ask it to use its natural voice. So that's very kind of it to ask. Navigation, jump to search. So I don't want to blast anybody out, but automatically right there, a student can easily access having something read to them. They don't have to download a special extension. They don't have to get a special something that costs money. It's already provided to them right there in Google. And it's as easy as clicking that button, button and clicking and dragging around the text box area that they want to listen. So uh, like I said, Google has done a lot with tools to add access to students right from their fingertips. They also have um, the Vox tool, which is here in the accessibility as well. And the Chrome Vox is spoken feedback. I don't like hitting it because it's gonna start like um, speaking for anything on the screen, anything I click on, Vox will like start telling me what I clicked on and what I did but that is a spoken feedback tool for students. So all of this, uh, they have other things, the screen magnifier, which uh, we have some, some students use the screen magnifier for visibility. If I hit that, it's gonna magnify my screen. They also have a, a docked magnifier, which brings it into a magnification in a certain area where I can scroll around and find magnification. Again, all of those available right there from your students' devices. Let me see if I can get that back turned off again. Um, the one awesome thing that Google has also brought out, which we thought would be really great for teachers to access. If you can get access to a Chromebook, uh, Google has also brought out a screencast tool. Now it's only on Chromebooks. It's not within uh, the Google Chrome web browser. I'm not gonna take a quick tour. Um, but the great thing about this screencast tool is it will also create a um, transcript. And so if you wanted to do a lesson, if you wanted, you had kids that weren't there or kids that needed to access something later, you could do that lesson with a Chromebook do it on their screencast tool, which is found right here in the files. So I go here, this is where you find files on a screen on a Chromebook and you just scroll down and find the screencast app. 
And when you do a screencast there, it provides a transcript of that screencast. Uh, I think that is an amazing leap forward for what we can provide to our students. So again, all of those are provided right there on student Chromebooks as a great um, tools for our students. So those are the ones that are built into a Chromebook. There are some that are on um, every time you're using a Chrome browser. So I'm going to go through uh, a few of those uh, that are built into the drive. Uh, so uh, first one is the text to speech. There is the app in the in the accessibility, but if you're not on a Chromebook or if you just want quick access, there is voice typing built into both slides and docs. So to see that, if I go to tools and I go voice type, know that in when you're in a um, Google slide, it only puts it into the speaker notes. Uh, but that's something you could copy paste and put into your slide um, later, but it, it does it there. And then for a doc, same thing. I have tools and we're loading and um, voice typing. Once I click on that, you're gonna see I have a microphone right here and I just had to click on that microphone and it will start recording and I click on it again to, um, to get it to stop. So I just have to allow it and then it will add my words. The microphone when you're done. Okay. So really simply brings up that microphone both um, here in Docs and in um, Slides as well. Uh, the other thing to mention is when you're using that um, screen reader, whether it's the Vox or the Read Your Screen, if there are images on that screen, uh, that reader will tell you about those images if the user or the builder of that slide deck um, added information about them. So to do that, if this is my image here, I can right click on that and add alternate text. So the title would maybe be um, Google Drive logo. Thank you on a screen keyboard. Um, and then the description you could say it's a, um, a triangle with um, um, blue, red, typing too fast yellow sides. Um, the advantage of that, and maybe not so critical for a Google logo, but if you, then the screen reader, as it progresses through the screen, when it gets to that image, it's not going to just skip that image, but instead it's going to tell the user what, what image is there. So if they can't see it, then um, they will, they will um, at least get a description of it so they can at least be in the loop of what's there. So. So know that that is an option when you're building slides, when you're building web set, websites, um, even if you have an image on a Google Doc, anything you're sharing with students where they might have it read to them, um, putting that, that little text in there will give that screen reader something to tell the, the user what it is that's on the screen. Even if they can't see it, they will get a description. Um, another thing to mention, if you're working with students who use a Braille reader, if I go under Tools, there is an accessibility here. Um, and this is something you need to turn on if you're using a Braille support system, some um, third-party apps or extensions, same thing for screen magnifier. So if I turn these on and say OK, OK. So now you can see this accessibility gives you a few more features. Again, these are third parties, but I want to mention it if anyone does work with students who use a Braille reader, writer, um, that that would be something that, that you would want to turn on and then it would support that. Um, support that uh, third party. Um, another one is the speaker notes. Again, if you want your students to be able to, um, now that I've got this all messed up, to see what you're saying, if I present my slideshow, so I'm going to kind of present this now, and in the bottom left corner, you have this little panel that tells you what slide you're on. But there's also three dots here. and I can go and make captions under caption preference and click this on and then it will start to uh, narrate my speech so that students can not only hear but see what it is you're saying on your screen. And you may have noticed there is an option to choose the location of that um, when you are recording as well, um, but that all works with these three dots. And I'm going to turn it off. And then text position, text size. Um, you can choose all of that as well when you are um, speaking. 
And the last one I'll mention, um, working with ELL students, um, our ELL person today even just mentioned typing up some quick directions if you want to type up directions or something and just have those translated under tools. There is an option to translate the document. So if you had a, a maybe not an entire document, but a, a short set of directions or um, maybe something to go home, it's not foolproof, um, but there is an option to um, translate your document and then it would save a copy of that with that that translation. So just something to kind of be aware that's, that's available as well. So we've been talking about those add-ons that work in Docs, and we've been talking about um, the other pieces on a Chromebook. But if I'm on a Chromebook, or if I'm on another computer that's not somewhere, um, there are extensions that Chrome has that will allow me more accessibility um, on, the, on the website. So if I, the very first one I'd like to talk about is Carrot Browsing. For my students who have um, less mobility and are not able to run the mouse, current browsing will allow me to move my cursor and to navigate through um, what I'm reading with just the cursor, just the arrows. So if I go to another web page and I go down into my article and I do F7 on my Chromebook, <laughs> I don't have that stuff on my Chromebook. <laughs> Minor detail. <laughs> That's OK. I can come up to the top here and use Carrot uh, through the browser. Oh, it says turn it on and turn Oh, there we go. So I can plop that cursor into the document that I'm reading, and I can move throughout what I'm reading with that. I can also press Control or Shift, sorry, Shift. Um, and that will highlight what I'm um, reading so that students can track where I am in the article and they can read along with um, knowing where we are in the article. Another accessibility item that Chrome has is um, Screen Shader. Screen Shader changes the color of my screen, gives me more of an orange tinge to, you can see that I can choose different areas or different colors that I want. Um, and it gives my screen that orange tinge and gives my eyes a little bit of a break. Also, um, is a little more calming um, and allows my students to read a little bit longer on their Chromebooks with that shade in the background. And I can pick different shades. I can even take a look at different times of the day. Um, I can pick different colors if I want different colors to shade my screen. If I want more of a purple shade to my screen, I can add that in because I need to add Ooh. It gives me a little bit more of a purple shade to my screen. Another extension that I can add, and these are all linked in the titles. Um, another one that I can add is a dark reader. I skipped ahead. It's very it's very similar to uh, the last one. It's another one that changes screen color. So if you click on it, it's right next to the carrot. Okay. And yep. And you can invert colors. So if you turn it on, you can invert colors. I believe we'll actually lose the slideshow in this one. At least I did earlier. Um, it will also change the screen from dark to light. So very similar to the screen shader one as well. Oh, there it is. Perfect. There it goes. Excellent. And if you're just having a dark day, I mean, this is the way to go. We all have dark days sometimes. Just throw on the dark shade. <laughs> Kids will know. They'll be like, oh, it's a dark She's day. Having one of those days. Excellent. Um, on our slideshow. Just Read is another extension that we came across. Just Read will remove the distractions and the ads um, from a web page. So if I go back to the NASA web page that I had open with the ads on the side and the comments and the other pieces, and I go to Just Read, it will allow me to create a page that doesn't have all the extra distractions or places to lose focus, but we'll still add in the questions in the article itself and pictures. 
it will leave those there, but it'll get rid of everything else on the side. So that is handy um, to keep focus. Back to my presentation. The last one I have is a is read aloud, which is another one that just will read the text on my article um, and make it more accessible for students. I can also change the speed or the pitch um, in highlighting the text so that they can track the text. I can use it in online textbooks or blogs or just a regular web page um, just to give them the opportunity to hear the text as well as see it at the same time. And then I'm on to read and write. Read and write is very similar. It's another just read um, reading and dictation uh, app. It's been around for a while. Probably many of you have heard of it. Uh, the nice thing about it is it also works with Google Docs. So if you have students who are working on a Google Doc, one of the ideas I think that is nice is I have students really have a hard time to go back and read their work and like listen to what it sounds like. So you can use Read Write to even have students when they are editing or um, or trying to look at their work and revise it, have it read it back to them um, and see how it sounds. I think that's an important thing that sometimes our students forget to do. Uh, and that's a great tool to add to use to do that. One extension I added that maybe you could argue that it's not necessarily an access accessibility tool, and we talked about it a little bit today, is Kami. Um, probably many people are very familiar with Kami, but Kami annotates on PDFs. And I like the idea of using Kami when you're planning lessons that you could highlight things that are important, make notes on it, like make things more accessible and chunked for students who might have a harder time with that. And also um, give students the uh, opportunity to highlight, write on things, um, take their own notes. And they, the nice thing about Cami is they could um, actually write on it, like with their mouse or finger if it's a touch screen, or they could also type into boxes um, and Cami is specifically for PDFs. So it would be definitely something that you would have downloaded like an article or something like that. But um, a great way to make those things a little bit more accessible to our students. And we have uh, Beeline Reader. And I know that some all these tools that we're throwing at you can be overwhelming. Please don't think you have to memorize them. All of them are hooked in or linked in to this slideshow and um, also will be on the video for, for you to review. So Beeline Reader um, is another color adjuster. In this case, it adjusts the color of the text. So if I was in, um, say, the article that we were in before. Let's see if this NASA article, and we have all of this blue in here. If that's tough for students, if they need a different color, they can change the colors to different colors that are more appropriate for them um, for the text. So those uh, bright texts would get changed to different colors that work for those readers. Um, most of the apps that we are, or extensions, I should say, that we're showing you all have a free version. And then they also have a paid version if you would like to pay money, but most of them um, have enough accessibility with it, with the free version um, that we like what they have to offer. Another one that's a color enhancer, very similar to Beeline Reader is called Color Enhancer. I really like the, the name, it's very original, it just really stands out. And then uh, finally for math, so I think it's really hard sometimes to find uh, accessibility tools for math and Equatio is a great tool for that. So Equatio allows students to create equations in any sort of document that they're working on. So if they click on Equatio, they can speak the equation and we're talking simple equations to hard equations. So they can speak the equation, they can type the equation, or they can write the equation, and Equatio will um, insert it in a doc for them <coughs> and help them get that out. So right here, they have this write tool. If they wanted to handwrite an equation, they can do that here, and it will try to decipher my writing with a mouse. 
Oh, I knew it was an A. That's actually pretty impressive. <coughs> no, but didn't like my second one. So they could write an equation. They could, um, I do have to click the button to start recording. Um, up here, sorry. It's slow. A plus B. And once they have their equation in, they can actually insert the math into the doc that they're working on with this insert tool down here, insert math. So it puts it right in what they're working on. Uh, Equatio has other things as well. You could also uh, add graphs into your work um, and look up uh, different equations. So a great tool for math as far as accessibility goes um, for students who might have trouble either writing or typing, just depending on what sort of tools you, you use, it gives them a lot of different um, options to kind of get their work down. Those are all the tools that we have for you today. Uh, we do highly encourage you, if you want to check out um, the uh, Google training, we do have that linked here in our credits. And they also have a slideshow presentation that uh, um, goes with uh, that. It's really more of a webinar. Um, but we got a lot of the tools that we talked about today from that webinar. Um, the do's and don'ts of designing accessibility posters are also available on our credits page. And if you ever have any questions for us, we also have our contact information there. So again, I'm Sherry, and this is Melissa and Rochelle. And thank you for coming and talking to us about accessing accessibility today. I didn't even stutter on it, Jeremy. Awesome. Well, thanks again, you guys. Um, appreciate it. You can look for this video to be shared out sometime tomorrow, along with a link to their slides that they have. Um, awesome. And I hope everyone has a happy, safe Thanksgiving uh, holiday that's coming up. So.